Welcome to Mixture of Knowledge. This video covers the Britax Advocate and Boulevard Click Tight Child Safety Seat User Guide. This is part two of the Advocate Boulevard Click Tight User Guide that I read through. This part two, I'm reading through Securing Your Child starting on page 20, Child Seat Functions starting on page 22, and I read all of that through Vehicle Compatibility starting on page 33 to 34. And my other video, part one, covered the first part from child seat features through safety information, rear facing and forward facing installations. Be sure to check that part one out as well. I learn a lot from every video that I make. It really makes me focus on the content and I've sure learned a lot from this user guide and I hope you can learn a lot as well. We purchased ours in September 2017 from Bye Bye Baby. And if you didn't know, if you sign up on ByeByeBaby.com, you can get a 20% off coupon which of course this is what we used with this purchase. So it's been almost five years now and we are really pleased with this purchase and um, are satisfied with the equipment. Please hit like and subscribe, that helps a lot and thank you for watching. Page two and three are illustrations of the seat front and back and all of the descriptions of 34 items and you can read through that on your own. Page 20, securing your child. Important, impact absorbing chest pads are highly recommended for forward facing mode. Removal of chest pads is optional for rear facing mode to ensure a snug fit for small infants. 1. Make the proper adjustments to the harness and buckle. See pages 23 to 25. 2. Loosen the harness. A. Press harness release button. B. Pull both harness straps forward. 3. Open the chest clip. A. Press tabs. B. Pull apart. 4. Release the buckle and attach the harness straps to the harness holders. 5. Place the child in the child seat. Ensure the child is positioned upright in the child seat and not slouching. Their bottom must touch the child seat and their back must rest flat against the back of the child seat. Six, position the harness straps around the child. Important, adjust the harness to fit the clothes the child is wearing. Remove bulky coats and or jackets before putting the child in the child seat. Page 21, seven, fasten the harness buckle. Proper connection is confirmed with a click after inserting each buckle tongue. Eight. Check for proper harness height and pull any excess slack up to the child's shoulder area before tightening. 9. Pull the harness adjuster strap to tighten the harness. The click and safe indicator will click when the harness is within range of appropriate snugness. Note: The harness should have a snug fit around the child. A snug strap should not allow any slack. It lies in a relatively straight line without sagging. It does not press on the child's flesh or push the child's body into an unnatural position you should not be able to pinch excess. Pull the harness adjuster strap out from the child's seat to tighten. Do not pull sideways. 10. Fasten the chest clip and place the chest pads in a comfortable position for the child within the range of a correctly placed chest clip. Note: The correct height for the chest clip is at the middle of the chest at armpit level. Checklist. Before traveling, verify that the harness straps are not twisted, harness is snug, buckle is fastened, chest clip is at the child's armpit level. Page 22, child seat functions, click and safe snug harness indicator. Important, see pages 20 and 21 for detailed instructions on securing your child. The click and safe is designed to sense tension when the adjuster strap is pulled and will provide an audible indication when the child seat harness is within range of appropriate snugness. The harness should have a comfortable but snug fit around the child. A snug strap should not allow any slack. It lies in a relatively straight line without sagging. It does not press on the child's flesh or push the child's body into an unnatural position. You should not be able to pinch excess webbing at the shoulder. Follow the steps below to tighten the harness. To tighten the harness. 1. Remove any bulky clothing from your child before tightening the harness. 2. Check for proper harness height. Three. Pull any excess slack in the harness up to the child's shoulder area. 4. Pull the harness adjuster strap straight out from the child's seat until a click is heard. The click and safe indicator will click when the harness is within range of appropriate snugness. Note: If there is still slack in the harness, repeat the steps above until another click indicates a snug harness. It may be necessary to double check that the harness is within range of appropriate snugness. Always confirm a snug fit by attempting to pinch excess webbing in the shoulders. Checklist. Check that the harness is buckled and secure. Check that the harness is snug and you cannot pinch excess webbing at the shoulder. Page 23. Adjusting the harness height. In rear facing mode, the harness straps should be in the closest position at or below your child's shoulders. 
See page 7. In forward-facing mode, the harness straps should be in the closest position at or above your child's shoulders. See page 7. 1. Loosen the harness. A. Push the harness release button. B. Pull both harness straps forward. 2. Squeeze the harness height adjuster. Slide the harness into the desired position and release. 3. Ensure the harness has locked into position. Adjusting the harness length. Important, adjust the harness to the shortened length if a snug harness cannot be achieved with a small infant, approximately 10 pounds and under. Shortening the harness. 1. Open the click tight. A. Press the dimple on the click tight dial. B. Rotate dial clockwise until click tight releases and lift to open. 2. Disconnect the end of one harness from the anchor. Page 24. 3. Thread the end of the harness through the opening on the inside of the metal bar behind the anchor to the bottom of the seating area. 4. Wrap the end of the harness around to the outside of the bar and slide the harness loop fully onto the anchor ensuring that it is secure. 5. Repeat on the other side. Note: Hold harness straps up and away from seat while closing the click tight. Lengthening the harness. 1. Open the click tight. A. Press the dimple on the click tight dial. B. Rotate dial clockwise until click tight releases and lift to open. 2. Disconnect the end of one harness from the anchor on the bottom side of the seating area. 3. Unwrap the end of the harness from the metal bar and pull to the top of the seating area. 4. Slide the harness loop fully onto the same anchor from the top of the seating area ensuring it is secure. 5. Repeat on the other side. Page 25. Harness buckle position. The child seat shell contains an inner buckle slot and an outer buckle slot. Position the buckle in the slot closest to, but not under the child. Reposition the harness buckle by following the steps on pages 39 to 41. Note, never leave the buckle in the adjustment slot. Using the harness buckle to fasten, one, insert one tongue at a time into the buckle. Proper connection is confirmed with a click after inserting each buckle tongue. To release, one, press the release button and pull the tongues from the buckle. Note. Periodically clean the buckle to ensure proper operation. See page 44. Using the chest clip. 1. Open the chest clip. A. Press tabs. B. Pull apart. 2. Push together to fasten. Note. Always position the chest clip at armpit level. Page 26. Comfort pillow. The comfort pillow is designed to provide better fit and comfort for infants using this child's seat. Note. Remove the comfort pillow after the child can sit comfortably in the child's seat without additional support. Seat Positions This child's seat has seven recline positions. To adjust the recline position, 1. Pull the recline handle, then rotate the child's seat shell until the recline indicator ball is in the correct position for the specific installation. See using the recline indicator below. 2. Release the recline handle, then verify the child's seat has locked into position. Note, set the seat position before installing. Using the recline indicator, rear facing installations. It is important that the child seat be properly reclined. Use the recline indicator on the child seat to help achieve an acceptable recline angle for infants and children with no head and neck control, recline indicator ball in the light blue section. Older children with proper head and neck control, recline indicator ball in light blue or dark blue. Note, if necessary, the proper recline angle can be achieved by placing a roll towel or pool noodle in the vehicle's seat right. Forward facing installations. Use the recline indicator on the child's seat to help achieve an acceptable recline angle with the recline indicator ball in the green section. Page 27. Overhang. It is important that the base of the child's seat rests completely flat on the vehicle seat with no side overhang. As seen in the illustration, it is permissible to allow up to 3 inches of the base to hang over the front edge of the vehicle seat. If the vehicle seat does not allow enough of the child's seat base to make contact, adjust the recline angle to a more upright position. Not doing so could cause the child's seat to not perform as intended. There is the acceptable forward facing and acceptable rear facing. Warning. In some cases, the vehicle head restraint can prevent the child seat head restraint from being raised high enough to properly adjust the harness for the fit of your child when using a forward-facing recline position. Do not force the child seat head restraint past the vehicle head restraint. 
doing so could cause the child seat not to perform as intended. If the location of the vehicle head restraint interferes with the child seat head restraint, raise or remove the vehicle head restraint. If the vehicle head restraint cannot be removed, move the child seat to the upright position or try a different seating location. Uninstalling the seat. 1. Unbuckle the vehicle seat belt. Note, for car seats installed with lower connectors, see page 30. 2. Open the click type. Page 28. Anti-rebound bar in select models. In the event of a crash, the anti-rebound bar is designed to prevent rebound rotation in rear-facing car seat installations. Warning: The anti-rebound bar is not intended for use as a carry handle. Do not use the anti-rebound bar to carry this child seat. Important: The anti-rebound bar must be removed for forward-facing installation. Installing the anti-rebound bar. 1. Open the click tight. 2. Pull back on the shell cover behind the red marker and locate the open end of the structure tube. 3. Insert one end of the anti-rebound bar into the tube as shown, then repeat for other side. 4. Lift up on the anti-rebound bar to ensure both ends are properly set inside the structure tubes. Note: Closing the click tight will completely secure the anti-rebound bar. Removing the anti-rebound bar. 1. Open the click tight. 2. Grasp the anti-rebound bar at both sides and pull away from the child seat. Page 29. Using the lower anchors and tethers for children. Latch. The lower anchors and tethers for children or latch is a system available on this child seat that offers an alternative to vehicle seat belt installation methods. The figure below shows typical locations for lower anchors and tether anchors in a vehicle. See pages 2 to 3 for latch components on this child seat. Latch system anchor locations. Check your vehicle owner's manual to learn if it is equipped with latch. The maximum weight rating for the lower anchors, tether anchors capabilities, and information on the lower anchor locations and designated seating positions available for use with this child seat. Lower connectors. Using the lower connectors. The lower connectors are located in the back of the base of the child seat. Store the connector assembly in the compartment when not in use. To attach the lower connectors, 1. Remove the lower connectors from the storage compartment at the rear of the seat and pull the strap to full length toward the child's left side. 2. Press the lower connector hook over its adjacent lower anchor. For full installation instructions, see pages 10, 11, or 16 and 17. Page 30. To remove the lower connectors, 1. Push the lower connector adjuster release button to loosen the lower connector strap. 2. Push down in the seating area and open the click tight. 3. Squeeze the lower connector hook and lift off the lower anchor. Impact absorbing tether. Warning. Failure to follow the guidelines below may cause the child's seat not to perform as intended. Britix recommends that the tether be used when installing the child's seat forward facing. Using the tether will improve the stability of your child's seat and reduce the risk of injury. Attach the tether only to tether anchors identified by your vehicle manufacturer as tether anchorage points. Only use the designated tether anchor for each seating position. If your vehicle does not currently have a tether anchor attachment, refer to your vehicle owner's manual or contact your vehicle manufacturer for assistance. Do not modify your vehicle without advice from your vehicle manufacturer. Store the tether in the compartment on the back of the child's seat when not in use. Tether anchor locations vary from vehicle to vehicle. Check your vehicle owner's manual for tether anchor capabilities and look for the tether anchor symbol shown in the diagram to help identify where the top tether anchor points are located in your vehicle. Page 31. Using the tether. Important, do not use the top tether strap with rear-facing installations. To improve rear-facing performance of this child's seat, an anti-rebound bar can be purchased at us.britix.com. To attach the tether to a tether anchor, 1. Firmly press the hook over the tether anchor point. 2. Pull the loose end of the webbing to remove slack from the tether. Note: If the tether is too short for use in your vehicle, contact Britix Consumer Services at this phone number or this phone number to obtain a tether extender. To remove the tether from a tether anchor, 1. Loosen the tether. A. Tilt the lock up. B. Pull the tether webbing. 2. Remove the tether hook from the tether anchor. Note: Store the tether in the tether compartment when not in use and ensure the tether compartment door is fully closed. Page 32. The tether as a crash indicator. The tether can indicate when the child's seat has been in a moderate or severe crash. See important notes on page 5 and replacement of the child's seat is necessary. 
Figure 1 shows a tether acceptable for continued use provided the child seat has not been involved in a crash. The colored stitching will be intact. Figure 2 shows an example of when the tether has been damaged and is unacceptable for continued use. If any of the colored stitching has ripped, the child seat is no longer acceptable for use. Important. Discontinue use of child seat if it has been involved in a moderate or severe crash, regardless of whether the colored stitching has been ripped. Page 33. Vehicle Compatibility Vehicle Seating Positions Warning: Do not place child seat rear-facing in the front seat of a vehicle with a passenger airbag. Death or serious injury can occur. Owners of vehicles with front passenger side airbags should refer to their owner's manual for child restraint installation instructions. The back seat is the safest place for children 12 and under. Some vehicles have no seating positions which are compatible with this child seat. If in doubt, contact the vehicle manufacturer for assistance. Forward-facing vehicle seats must be used with this child seat. Side-facing or rear-facing seats cannot be used. See the diagram below. Page 34. Incompatible vehicle seat belts. Vehicle seats and seat belts differ from vehicle to vehicle. Refer to your vehicle owner's manual for specific information about your vehicle seat belts and their use with child seats. Warning: The following types of vehicle seat belts are not compatible with this child seat. If any of the belt types listed below are in the chosen seating position, choose another vehicle seating position or check your vehicle owner's manual for information on installing a car seat in your vehicle. Lap belts with a sewn-in latch plate that have a retractor that locks only in case of a sudden stop. Lap belts forward of the vehicle seat bite. Lap shoulder belts with top or bottom anchor points on the vehicle door. Motorized automatic vehicle seat belts. Note, this Britex car seat may not be compatible with every inflatable lap shoulder belt. See facts in the support section of the Britex website, us.britex.com forward slash facts for additional instructions. And my other video, part one, covered the first part from child seat features through safety information, rear facing and forward facing installations. Be sure to check that part one out as well. Please hit like and subscribe, that helps a lot and thank you for watching.